You're listening to the BBM Global Network with 25 years in broadcast audio and video production. Our passionate team creates content and marketing for the world of Internet talk radio. If you've got a passion, come join us at BBMGlobalNetwork.com. The BBM Global Network. Your voice is now heard. Welcome to Voices of Women with your host, Chris Stainis. Chris will inspire women and enlighten men to follow their dreams in order to create positive changes in their everyday lives. Chris can guide you with tools that will empower you and create the changes you desire. So welcome the host of Voices of Women, Chris Stainis. Well, welcome to Voices of Women. I'm Chris Stainis, and we're coming to you live from BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. I'm the founder of Women of Wisdom Foundation and the Women of Wisdom, or what we call WOW, conference. We've been changing women's lives for the past 26 years and plan to continue doing that for another 26, hopefully. WOW gives voice to the feminine wisdom within all of us and transforms the collective consciousness, our personal growth, women gather to share their stories, there's so much power in witnessing and validating each other, and um, we all want to be leaders of our own lives. So visit our website at womanofwisdom.org. We have a special event if you're in the Seattle area, June 9th. It's a gender reconciliation workshop. We've been doing this for many years, and this year's topic is transforming patriarchy from gender oppression to beloved community. So you can check that out on our website. Just look for the gender workshop at womanofwisdom.org. And also you can check out my book which is a compilation of women's stories, art, poetry, some of the great voices of the divine feminine. It is called Woman of Wisdom, Empowering the Dreams and Spirit of Women. It's also available in Kindle, which you get the art in color. Today we're going to talk about how we can slow down and stop overscheduling ourselves. Our guest is Yvonne Talley. She's the author of Breaking Up with Busy and leads meditation and de-stressing programs for corporations, individuals, and private groups in Silicon Valley. She's an NLP master practitioner, and Yvonne co-founded Poised, Inc., a Pilates and wellness training studio. And she's also the founder of the Sisterhood of the Traveling Scarves, a charity that provides headscarves to cancer patients. So welcome, Yvonne. Well, thank you. It's great to be with you, Chris. So tell us your story. What happened in your life that caused you to stop in your tracks of your, as we all have, a very busy life? That's so true, isn't it? And it seems to be a prevailing part of our culture now. And I was so busy teaching others how to have a vibrant and healthy lifestyle, you know, growing a business, raising my daughter, that I even missed my own signs of busy and overscheduled. So it was the fast pace, the sleepless nights, and the cram schedules. And it landed me in the back of an ambulance on the way to the emergency room thinking I was having a heart attack when in fact I was having a panic attack brought on by stress. And it scared me enough that I made a huge lifestyle shift and I adopted a much more mindful approach to life uh, on a daily basis. And that was, uh, I knew that I needed to find solutions. I mean, here I was an organic, eating, healthy, exercising, you know, positive thinking person and I thought if this happened to me it's got to be happening to other people as well there's a bigger story here so I set out to find solutions create solutions and I organized those and put them in this book and uh, here we are yes and, and isn't it true sometimes it takes an emergency to stop us to evaluate what we need to change to have a, a better and well-balanced life where we're not um overstressed and overwhelmed with everything, which just seems to be really going on. I mean, it's just um, what I noticed, just a lot of overwhelm with uh, particularly women and so much going on in our society. And um, 
in some ways people just want to check out, <laughs> you know, and you have some tools for this. So um, one of the things you have, there's a statement in your book, it says, we're not striving for perfect, which so many of us try to do, just better. What, is, what does that mean to you? Well, I think a lot of times, you know, you make the point, the, a good point about people wanting to check out, and, and that uh, that's, I think that's one of the, one of the uh, things that we end up experiencing um, once we get to that busy, busy pace. We're we're finding, we're trying to find ways to soothe ourselves, so we do check out, and when we do that, we disconnect with what we're feeling, and we're going to be more inclined to miss those signals that our body and our mind are sending to us. And when there's a lot of noise and a lot of distraction around us, which there is now so often with the culture that we live within, um, that that becomes more prevalent and easier just to ignore rather than try to move towards what we want. We just kind of stay in that bubble, in that quagmire of muck, if you will, that keeps us trapped in this busy behavior. But this idea of perfect is something that um, I think has gotten set up for a lot of women, perhaps not all, but for many women, and especially the women that I have um, worked with over the last two decades. And it's this idea that we have to do it all. And that uh, if we're not doing it all, whatever that may be, there's a couple of things that come into play there. There's the career and the family. And if you're a woman working with inside the home um, and you have a career within the home, that, that's even amplified even more because there is no break from anything at that point. But if you have both of those going on, the third piece that we've forgotten is this self-care. And we've denied our fa- ourselves this self-care because we have this idea that we should be doing all of this perfectly all of the time and sustain it, you know, with giving our, giving our best to everything. And what I try to convey in the book is that better is sometimes our best. Okay is sometimes our best. In other words, we need to give ourselves some space to take a break, to lighten up on ourselves. And when we start to do that as individual women, we then can begin that ripple out effect that we uh, can shine a light and a way for other women to do the same. Because this idea of being busy and being all, you know, Gloria, Gloria Stein said it best, you can't have it all if you have to do it all. And we've proven really well as women that we can do, we've mastered the family end of it. And even if you don't have children, you still have family. And you're more likely as a woman to care for an aging parent or an ill sibling. So family we got down. Career, we've done really well with that. The third piece that we have to bring into the picture is the self-care. Yes, that's so true. And um, so for you, how is your life better after your health scare? Well, for me, what happened was I really got back to a place where I uh, connected on a on a more spiritual level. That was something that my mother had taught me early on uh, and or exposed me to, I guess you can say. And that really opened up a, a lot of avenues for wellness for me, um, applying, uh, the, or not applying, but being uh, connected with my spiritual self. So that was one of the big changes. I also went on to do neurolinguistic uh, training, neurolinguistic programming training, and brought that into the work that I had been doing. I'd been working with... Uh, with clients developing these vibrant and healthy lifestyle plans, mostly in the area of food and nutrition and fitness. And I was always, always had these solutions, these kind of practical solutions that I would sprinkle into the training. And when I uh, went back and I did my neurolinguistic program training and did the master program as well, I really then got some great techniques and methods that I was able to put into easy solutions that also worked well with the mindfulness end. And that's really what I do is I work with both practical solutions and mindful practices. So that's really where my life and my work shifted the most. Mm -hmm. And we're going to be talking about some of these mindful practices. And you start this book by saying that I'm busy is the new I'm fine. Yeah, you know, our, our, at a time when our culture was much more private, especially in public, we would always, it was a way to greet, it was also a way to exit a conversation. Hi, how are you? I'm fine. Okay, let's move on. And what's happened now is a couple of shifts have taken place for this busy culture to really erupt and become so uh, prevalent now. And the first one is economics. When economics grow and incomes rise, time seems to be more valuable and we don't want to waste it. So we pack in as much as we can and we become busy. So today there's kind of 
this status symbol attached to being busy. And mm-hmm. when we say it, it makes us feel like we're part of the group. If you're busy, I'm busy. You get me, I get you. And it also yeah. makes us feel important. Right. Yeah. I'm busy. I'm productive. Look what I'm doing. Well, this is Chris Danis, your host at Voices of Women on Bold Brave Media and Tune In Radio. When we come back, we're going to discuss what an OSW is. Unleash the obstacles that bind you with certified professional coach Joanne Charette, a master practitioner in energy leadership. Joanne can help you break through personal and professional barriers and guide you to a higher level of empowerment and fulfillment. Passionate and dedicated, Joanne engages with her clients on a mutual journey. Her dynamic energy will motivate you to move forward as you partner on a venture to greater results. Isn't it time to make a breakthrough and commit to live the life you deserve? Invest in yourself and let Joanne Charette be the catalyst to the realization of your dreams by making them a reality. Based in Quebec, Canada, Joanne is also a space coach using social media and Skype to work with anyone anywhere around the world. Contact Joanne Charette today at 819-360-3266 or email her at actionrealization at live.ca. 819-360-3266. Now is your time. Essential Nutrients, LLC, is the brainchild of entrepreneur Barbara Burns. Inspired by a desire to help others, Barbara worked with a team of scientists to develop unique nutritional liquid supplements with the goal to improve the quality of your life. Glucosamine, zinc, and calcium are essential to well-being, and this is the focus of Essential Nutrients, LLC. Whether you're a professional athlete, weekend warrior, student, business owner, or homemaker, Essential Nutrients offers products for everyone, including the family pet. And they're easy to take, no pills. Health requires commitment, exercise, a good diet, proper supplementation, and action. So take action today and get your supply of Essential Liquid Nutrients by visiting www.essential-liquids.com. Don't put off your health any longer. Take Essential products today and start to measure the difference. Welcome back. I'm your host, Chris Stanis, and you're listening to Voices of Women, live from BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. I'm with Yvonne Tolley today, author of Breaking Up with Busy. So we've been talking about this busy culture. What's unique about women being busy compared to men? Well, you know, we touched on the economics of it, but the other piece of that economics is that um, we, we know now it's all over the news. As women, we make about an average of 80 cents on the dollar. And if you're a woman of color, then you can drop that down to about 63 cents. And in addition to that, the other part of that economics is two-thirds of the women working outside of the home have school-aged children that they have to provide and schedule and manage uh, care for. And then as women, we still take about 80% of the lion's share, or we can call it lioness share, of the domestic life, and that's what we call unpaid work. So the economics of setting this up just right there, we can see the facts of which we are going to be more busy because we have this obligation uh, to make sure that these things roll together in a, in a harmonious way. The other piece of this busy, and I think this is really important to, to speak to, and that's technology. Uh, we spend an average of five hours a day. That's an average of five hours a day checking and working and playing around with our cell phones, and that's, um, that works out to be about almost 3,000 3,000 times we're touching that phone every day. So you can see how technology has really grabbed us, and we know that there's an addictive quality to it as well. So we've put that piece in there. Um, And so women get set up into this uh, busy kind of pace, and with this idea that we feel more accepted and and, uh, more important when we're busy because everybody around us is busy, everyone in our reference group, those that we associate with and share our lives with are busy, then for us to be a part of that group, we too will be busy. It's just human nature. Everybody wants to be accepted and be a part of a group. That's just normal. Um, So women get hit with it much more on an economic level. And technology, of course, that addresses men and women. And then the third piece would be this disconnection from nature. And uh, we've disconnected from nature, so we're not feeling and we're not listening to our feelings of how we're feeling inside as well as much as we might when we take time and space to be quiet. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so true. So what is an OSW? 
And then how yeah, can women tell yeah. if they are one? <laughs> so I always tell yeah. you, I'll just say for the audience, it means overscheduled woman. Yeah, and I think most women have felt like an overscheduled woman or an OSW at some point in their life. Again, especially if they're raising family and career simultaneously, if that's coming being built together at the same time. And even many of my clients and women that I've spoken to that do not have children have experienced the same expectations and demands. So it's this get it done attitude that is deeply embedded in the overscheduled woman ideology. And a couple of the signs are uh, she frequently opts out of doing something for herself when someone else close to her requests her time. And she often puts herself last and has that kind of variegated sense of doing too much and not doing enough. And because it's such a busy, fast pace, and there's a lot of multitasking going on, which we know doesn't work, but we still do it anyway, that at the end of the day, we, we aren't, don't even have a connection with what, we've, what we're feeling or what we've done. And so I always say it's this kind of this tribal chant of make it happen, get it done, be the best, give it your all, and then do it again. And it's that imbalance between obligation and expectation and the lack of personal replenishment that leaves many women feeling as though they just they can't catch up with their lives. And in a nutshell, that's what the OSW is. Well, um, let's give some help for women to help uh, identify what types. So you, you've, you have identified some different types of OSW women. Can you give us a couple, an example or two? Yeah, one of them would be uh, the pleaser, which seems to be a very prevalent one. And she's that one that has, you know, she's got that heart of gold, very helpful. She's the one to call in, in a crunch. And that she's that ace assistant. And those are, those are some of her really positive characteristics. On the unresourceful characteristics, she spends a lot of time doing things for others and finds it very difficult uh, to allow others to do things for her. And a lot of this, you know, a lot of this gets set up in our early childhood, and then we develop these habits and strategies that consistently uh, refuel these, these, te- these uh, tendencies. So this fear of messing up uh, is part of what is her mind chatter going on all the time. If I don't please you or do it right, you'll ignore me. So some of her self-care tips, and if that feels familiar or pieces of it feel familiar, some of the self-care tips are, um, I would say, you know, use your inner circle to practice saying no. And it's that, it is that uh, compassionate no. It's not coming from a place of anger or resentment. It's learning to say no in a way that helps us uh, set boundaries that are meaningful. And remember, boundaries are not about keeping people out. They're about creating space for you to exist within. So it's very important that she gets to a space and also to just to also to reflect on her beliefs. You know, what is it that she is incorporating in her daily habits and, and her life that she truly believes and that are meaningful to her and a- actually moving her in a direction that she can feel gratified and fulfilled without having to have the approval of others. Mm-hmm. And so this that would be, creating boundaries, that would be one of the I, I find... Yeah, and in creating boundaries, I find I see that in women that um, they find it hard to 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 set their boundaries, and um, and it's about self self respect, I think, of really knowing what's right for you, and um, and and being very clear. I mean, it's one of the things about setting boundaries, being very clear with others, so that you're not being. I think our fear is we're going to be offensive. We're not going to be liked if we say no and. And, and if we're clear and compassionate and loving in a situation, it will be received as, oh, wow, that person knows how to take care of themselves. Yeah, it certainly can be. And I think that the under P, the piece that's under this about delivering that, you know, creating those boundaries, I always say boundaries are like handrails on a staircase. Everyone feels better when they're there. And uh, so that, that piece about not being liked or being offensive, the key is to be able to set those boundaries and not have the concern or worry about not being liked or being offensive. Because when we set healthy boundaries and, we're, and we give ourselves that space to be complete and full, uh, and we can't take care of others unless we've taken care of ourselves first. And that's really important to remember. If we have the mindset or the belief that we're all connected and we all are here together doing the best that we can and sharing this space, that our energy and our, uh, our habits and the things that we think and do and act have impact not only on ourselves, but all of those within our lives that we share our space and time with. 
And if you're raising children, setting those boundaries is a modeling for them as much as it is a practice for living well. So it becomes very important as women, we often, you know, early on, we're taught, be nice, smile, get along, don't make waves. And even with independent mothers, I had an independent mother. I still got that message loud and clear. Mm -hmm. So saying no can be really unfamiliar for women. Right, right. And I I love what you say. I love it. You say of setting a, an setting an example um, to our young ones, uh, being a model of this. Well, this is Christinas, your host at Voices of Women on Bold Brave Media and Tune In Radio. When we come back, we're going to hear about the traps women often fall into. Animal lover, author, artist, and public speaker, Patricia Daly Life is a Renaissance woman in her own right, a lover of animals from a young age. Patricia lives on a farm in Virginia and has rescued neglected thoroughbred horses, keeping them or finding them safe havens. She is also a published author, and her books document real-life experiences that she shares in her passionate stories, taking the reader around the world in a colorful kaleidoscope of life. An accomplished artist, Patricia Daly Life's oil paintings feature animals, portraits, stills, nature, and abstract, and she allows the brush to paint the image in an organic, natural way. A public speaker, Patricia is motivated to continually wonder about life and advocates for all of us to do the same and document our own unique history. To learn more about Patricia Daly Life, visit www.literarylady.com and www.patricialife.com or email her at pdlife at gmail.com. Hello, I'm Steve Fagan, and I'm president and CEO of Fagan Associates, but I'm also a life coach. I'm here to help you reach your dreams, goals, and objectives. As a life coach, it's my job to be your support, to be your teammate, to help you understand what is your dream, what is your life passion, and then together we work as that team to help you reach your specific goals. Life is worth living the best you can be. Working with a life coach, you're fulfilling those dreams and goals is your passion, and it's your way of living. Let me help you do that today. Let me help you really reach the best that you can be as a person and live the life you should be living. I'm Steve Fagan. I'm a life coach, and I'm here for you. Contact Steve Fagan at FaganAndAssociatesInc.com or call 1-800-239-2701. And I'll be glad to help you move forward to live the life of success. Reach your dreams, your goals, your objectives. We can do it together. Well, welcome back to Voices of Women. I'm Chris Danis coming to you live from BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. And today we have the guest, Yvonne Talley, author of Breaking Up with Busy. So we've been talking about this um, overwhelm, overscheduled, OSW, overscheduled women, which puts us into overwhelm. Um, so in your book, you offer that there's um, four different traps that women often fall into. Um, so I'd love for you to share what these are, and then we can talk about, okay, how do we get out of these traps? Exactly. What, what ladder is there to climb out? Yeah, and we fall into these traps, and there, I'm sure there's more, but these are the four that really popped up for me, um, and that uh, we fall into them when we in, uh, inadvertently attach our emotions to the outcome. And we allow those emotions to dictate our decisions. And we do that over and over, and it becomes a habit. And then we end up in this, as I say, this quagmire of of feeling stuck. And those traps are fueled by the OSW's propensity for being well-intentioned. She's very well-intentioned, typically, and she's an over-deliverer. In other words, being the best and doing more. So the traps are reinforced with the shoulds of life. I should be this person. I should do this. I should take, I should be like that. And so there's a lot of self-judgment. And that squelches, that squelches our innovation and creative problem solving. So we get stuck there. And uh, this idea of being, at, being all or keeping up or saying yes or over-delivering are the four traps. And, and, uh, and they can be very, there's a big allure to them, you know, the praise and confirmation that the overscheduled woman is, as you had pointed out earlier, being liked and accepted. Uh, more is better, so I can deliver that. Um, this is all part of these traps. And once we're aware of that, and, they, and you can go through the book and pick these out again, once you're aware of that, then you can start to move to problem solving or to solution-based thinking. And um, that's what I provide at the end of each one of these. Like, what can we do now to move from that trap out into active solution-based thinking and um, uh, 
solutions that will move us forward. Well, okay, let's let's go into one of them. Uh, what um, one is really strong for you, and how do you um, create a new mindset? Yeah, I, again, I would go back to that being all as far as get it done, do it all, do it perfectly all of the time. And uh, central to this, this trap is the need for reassurance and affirmation and acknowledgement. Yeah, again, to be valued and appreciated. That's something that we all share. No matter where our level of self-confidence is, we all value being appreciated. And we all have the desire to be happy. So as human beings, we want to move away from pain and into feeling better. Uh, whether, whether that pain, you know, that emotional pain so that we move into a place where we feel satisfied. And sometimes we adopt habits and strategies that are not always beneficial to us. So one of the first things that I help a client do is uh, an exercise I, called, I call self-compassion. You know, we talk a lot about that today in our culture, about compassionate acts and doing things that are based in compassion. Um, but what about self-compassion? So we start out with some dis- discovery questions, as, such as, do you accept that others are not perfect? Do you lend a hand when someone is struggling? And then we turn those questions into questions about ourselves. Can you feel love for others when they are in emotional pain? Can you feel love for yourself? You know, do you allow others to help you when you're struggling? If you're if you're helping others when they're struggling, do you allow others to do the same? So this opens up a, a self-conversation that uh, leads to exploring more about what I am going to allow myself to feel and be and to be compassionate towards myself first so that I can truly additionally be compassionate to others. Yes, that's so important. Yeah, this um, self first. And, and, and it's not selfish. It's how can you serve others if you aren't, aren't in, a, in a place of, um, of, I don't know what the word is, like wholeness for yourself. If, if you're sacrificing yeah. yourself, you're not really fully giving to others too. So, um, yes. I would agree with that, and I, and I think selfish has gotten a bad rap because I think it's important that selfish doesn't mean it's selfish. It's about taking care of yourself first so that we can be of, of whole spirit, of whole mind, of, of whole um, service to others as well as ourselves because we are, I do believe we're all connected, and when we help one, we help the other. Mm-hmm. So true. So you discuss in the book how um, we've developed a lot of bad habits that are unresourceful, and and I know you go into like how to, what it takes to create new habits. Um, what is your what is your um, advice for people to uh, dropping bad habits and then creating new ones to replace them? Yeah. Well, first we have to we have to really kind of explore. What that if that is a, a belief system, if you will, that is set up that's working for us. So the first thing that I would do is I, I call it cleaning out your beliefs closet, and uh, because our beliefs are derived from our past experiences and and defined by define much of our our personal reality. So it's how we make sense of the world, and they're very t- t- deeply tied as part of our habits in developing those habits. You know, it's uh, beliefs are the opinions we hold true. So they form our values and our standards and the way we conduct our lives. So there's an exercise in there about uh, self-reflecting questions about what beliefs are working for us. And that, when we start to uh, unwrap that a bit and we can take a look at those beliefs in a way that, you know, which ones are working for us, which ones are feeling as though they're holding us back, certain situations that, they, that we've experienced in our lives and what beliefs brought us to that conclusion that were resourceful or unresourceful. So then once we get that kind of cleared up, then we can start to look at some of the habits that we've adopted that are working for us and that are not. So there's a solution process, what I call the super solutions process in the book that can help uh, anybody with any kind of situation when they're looking to create quick uh, creative solutions that they can work through these five steps and that will help them clear up very clear uh, what's working for them and what isn't, whether that be a habit or a belief or both, and then come up with a pattern, a process for designing and developing and bringing into their lives what they want and oftentimes we use our habits just on autopilot. It's like driving to work every day. We don't really think about it. We just get in the car and we go. 
when we start to think about things, we can then put together action based upon that thought. And we can put together uh, an alignment of thought to action towards what we want to create, not what we fear. So that is, that's definitely, I hope I answered your question about habits, but it really is going to pull back to let's discover what we really believe in. And that's not the, it can be a big overriding kind of uh, thing that we can explore, or it can just be one thing. We can take one situation that we might be experiencing in life right now. Maybe it's a difficult relationship, challenging relationship, or perhaps we're in a career that we want to make a shift and we're too afraid and we're stuck. Well, let's sit down and let's just talk about what, what is that belief that you have in place that's making you feel or keeping you feeling that way. And then move mm-hmm. from there. Yes. Yeah, it's a lot of inner work. So um, this is Christina, your host at Voices of Women on Bold Brave Media and TuneIn Radio. When we come back, we're going to discuss Yvonne's five-step super solutions process. Abuse happens every moment of every day. According to national statistics in the United States, Every two minutes, someone is sexually assaulted, and every 10 minutes, a report of child abuse is made. Those currently struggling with abuse, or if you know someone who has been the victim of abuse, you are not alone. Whether physical, mental, emotional, or sexual, no, there is hope. There is help. There is healing. Author Tammy Hall has written a book from her own account of abuse called Journey of Courage, that can guide you through your own personal journey of healing. Stop struggling through life. It's your story. It's your healing. And it can begin with the first turn of the page. Visit www.journeyofcourage.com to begin your path to becoming the person you were ultimately created to be. Healed. Hopeful. Happy. Horses. Mystical. Present. Past. And future. All in one. Wild, free, domestic, and healing for everyone. Betty Hames knows this and has put her horses to good use with Nature Connect Equine Coaching. Her mission is to help people affected by the loss of hope and trust in their lives and to rediscover the wonders of nature through nature-connected learning so they can rebuild their lives and live peacefully with newfound hope, trust, and joy. Betty Hames is also a certified elite life coach, a Washington State certified counselor, and chemical dependency professional. She is passionate about partnering nature with healing, and through horses, she sees amazing results and transformation in lives that might have otherwise been lost. Call 509-830-9225 and visit her at HamesLifeCoaching.com. Hold your horses. You're in for the ride of your life. Welcome back to Voices of Women. I'm Chris Stanis on Bold, Brave Media and Tune in Radio. And today we have Yvonne Tolley here today when we're talking about her new book, Breaking Up with Busy. So Yvonne, let's uh, talk about your uh, super solution process. You have five steps and also a meditation magic that goes along with that. Yeah, those are really the, uh, Chris, the assen- what I call the essentials. They're really, uh, they can be used for anything by anybody. And the five-step super solution process is really a way to get your point across in a clear, thoughtful, effective, and efficient manner. And it also helps you discover just exactly what it is that you need and want in the process. So uh, the three components that are weaved through the five steps are what I call my direct thinking method, and that helps you activate your powerful conscious thinking so that you can make mindful decisions and choices that are aligned with what you want. And the second component is whittling, which is my favorite. It helps you get really clear on what you want. Whittling helps you edit and distill your thoughts into a well-formed statement uh, that conveys the essence of what you want. And the third piece of that is what I call sensing meditation. That's a meditative rehearsal of what you want using your five senses while in a conscious meditative state. It's a form of, uh, if you will, a form of performance Uh, training, meditating the outcome as though it's already happened. So those are the components of the five steps. Uh, I can go into the five steps if you'd like. Yes, yes, let's do that. So the first one is you uh, state state the problem. We don't spend a lot of time on the problem because I always say the solution isn't in the problem. We want to move from using our energy and thoughts in the problem. So you make one quick statement 
And then what we do is the second step is we flip that statement. We turn the problem into a solution statement. So, for example, I don't have enough time to exercise because work takes everything I have. And we would whittle that into what I call the flip. I will leave work on time, giving myself the time I need to exercise. So we've taken all the, the, if you will, the negative or the blocks that are in our way and turned it into the positive, and we whittle that down to six or ten words. And the interesting part about this step is that when we spend time whittling what it is that we have to say, editing, if you will, we get really clear on what it is that that we want rather than all this emotion that's floating around in that want. So the the example of the final flip would be my workout today is 30 minutes at 5 p.m. We get very clear on that. And then we do what I call spotlight it. That's the third step. We give a life to the flip statement. It's the first draft of your story, and your flip statement is the title. So we use our intention and our attention to narrate what we need and want as though it's already happened. So in other words, in this scenario, we imagine ourselves leaving our desk, we're looking at the clock, it's 4.30, 4.45, we're headed to the gym, that type of thing. As though we're already living that, we're already going through that scenario. We're bringing it into our lives on an energetic level. And then that fourth step would be what I call the mindful checkpoint, and that's, again, that sensing meditation. We get really real with that, and we take about three minutes to do that. And then we have our outcome statement, and that's the flip is the goal, and the outcome is what we will bring into our lives uh, when we accomplish that. What is it that we desire, need, and want? So in this example, I will feel more inspired to go after my goals. I'll, I'll attract more of what I desire, not what I fear, because I'll be more rested and more replenished because I've given myself the time to exercise. So it gets us really clear, and then we from that, we can even move into – a mantra or, you know, our tagline for the day, if you will. And the more we repeat that, the more we, of course, will make that an energetic reality. Yeah, I like you. You brought up this need, want, and I was a connection. I was wanting you to talk more about that Um, uh, because you had a statement, changing our relationship with busy requires us to know our need, want connections. So um, how how does that work with... um, um, to setting our goals and to creating a lifestyle that has the balance of um, and dealing with this over busyness that we do. Yeah, it's really easy to get into that space. And we often are really good about, you know, we hear it often in conversation. Yeah, well, I want to. And, and we get stuck on that want to. But what's wrapped around the want to is all the reasons why we're not doing it. So the need-want connection is when we've decided what it is or we've figured out or we're enlightened by what we want, then we have to go back and figure out what we need to get to that want, and that's that connection. So there's four, four questions that, that I have um, people ask themselves. The first one is, what do I really want? It's easy to get in that space of the want, 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 but what is it that I really want? Do I want the bigger house, the fancier car, the shinier, brighter, newer? Or what is it behind and underneath that and around that that I'm trying to bring into my life? Do I want more security? Do I want more joyful abundance? Do I want more love? Do I want more peace and calm? Because the things will come when we've gotten those other deep uh, desires cared for within us. And if we continually look on the outside of what we're trying to get because we think that's our want, we will never, ever fulfill what we need to that want. So the second question I always say is what will change for you when you have what you want? Because unless we know what's going to change, how can we know we really are headed in the direction of creating that shift that's going to fulfill us within? So um, that that's a really important piece, I think, for people to get really comfortable with is asking that question, what do I really want and what will change for me when I have what I want? And then again, you know, why now? Why is now any different than before? What, you know, what, what has changed within us? And why are we going to stick to making this happen? Why is now any different? That's an important question to ask ourselves as well. Yeah, and I, and I like you connecting it to need because what we need in our life is often very different than what we want. And sometimes I think when you get your needs filled, you actually fulfills actually what you want, what you wanted, but it just may not look like what you thought you wanted when you began. 
Yeah, and I think remaining really open to that, you bring up a really good point, Chris, being open to that. That's why I try to move people away from things. And the, there's nothing, I'm not making a judgment on anyone who wants beautiful things. I love beautiful things just as much as the next person. But when we don't fill up the need within, the want is going to be a continuous, continuous open pit of putting our energy into that pit and that space of continually going after the things. So backing up and discovering what it is I need first within. Um, For instance, I'll give you a quick example. Somebody who might be wanting to change careers or jobs, and they say, I want a new job. But what do you need to make that happen? Well, there's some real practical things. I'm going to need to, you know, put in, update my resume. I'm going to need to network. I'm going, but then there's other things that need to change as well or need to shift or need to be brought to the, to the top. And I call that really getting in touch with your attributes, your own personal gifts. What are the strengths that you have that you now can exhibit more often? Is that, is that something you need to really begin to cultivate from within? Mm-hmm. So yes. it's a combination of both. Right, right. Well, this is Christine, is your host at Voices of Women on Bold Brave Media and Tune In Radio. When we come back, Yvonne will share more tips on how you can break up with busy. Dr. Rob Moyer is the director of the Ocean River Institute, and he is passionate about saving the ocean by helping dolphins suffering from nitrogen pollution. Nitrogen is a dangerous pollutant, affecting our oceans, altering ocean ecosystems, and contributing to global warming. The Ocean River Institute provides opportunities to make a difference and encourages people to go the distance for savvy stewardship of a greater and bluer planet Earth. Partnered with organizations from Massachusetts to Florida, Alaska to the Caribbean, the Ocean River Institute's mission is to foster involvement in conservation and environmental monitoring by facilitating grassroots efforts at local and regional levels. Hello, I'm Rob Moyer of the Ocean River Institute. Please visit our website at oceanriver.org. Sign up for free e-alerts. You may call us at 617-661-6647. Our email address is info at Ocean River. Become informed and then act with us. Thank you. Dr. Rob Moyer is the director of the Ocean River Institute. and he- Joseph A. Moylan is the owner of Ion Health, which specializes in very unique medical devices. Ion Health offers biomats, alkalife, and frequency machines. Biomats are a far infrared and negative ion emitting FDA approved medical device. With many different sizes available, you can place them on your bed, on a massage table, or on a seat in your car. It is an unobtrusive way to health. Alkalife machines are water ionizers that cleanse and raise the alkalinity of your tap water, making high alkaline water. Frequency machines utilize certain frequencies to kill viruses and bacteria. These devices are safe and effective. Coming from a health-conscious background and studying physiology at the Academy of Natural Health, Joseph A. Moylan has 15 years of experience in the health field and wants to help you live a healthy, long life. Visit www.ionhealthbiomats.weebly.com or call 765-520-2988. Don't let your health go astray. Get in touch today. Welcome back to Voices of Women. I'm Chris Danis on Bold Brave Media and Tune in Radio. And today we have Yvonne Talley here with us today. And we're talking about her book, Breaking Up with Busy. So Yvonne, I'd love for you to share some stories of women that you've worked with of how they've overcome the busyness in their lives. So, you know, the kind of before and after story. Yeah, uh, one that comes to mind that uh, was working with a client who had, she was the first woman to graduate from college in her family, and uh, she'd gone on to build a a really successful career for herself, and she was raising two daughters, and she was raising those daughters on her own, and when it came time to prepare for college, which (laughs) happens from the day they're born, it's so expensive, you know, she, she took on an additional job, and she was working two jobs and raising her two girls, and she was always, always been active and healthy and, you know, ate well and exercised on a regular basis, but she was so fatigued and exhausted at night. She was coming home. She wasn't eating the same foods that she used to. She slowly cut out her exercise because she was just too tired. You know, and she started drinking a couple glasses of wine every night and just not taking care of herself. And uh, her sleep was affected. She started to suffer from insomnia. And, of course, her health was affected as well. And uh, But she continued, and she gained about 30 pounds and she over this period of about six years. And once her daughters 
got through college and moved out, she still continued to work the same two jobs and still continued these uh, unhealthy habits. So when she arrived in my office, it was really apparent that she was overwhelmed and disappointed about herself. And even though she had less stress and fewer time constraints, she still felt trapped. And she had unintentionally continued this same lifestyle where she was using outdated habits. And so the first thing that we had to do was kind of freshen up her habits one step at a time. So we started out with the three-minute meditation, which is something I frequently start people out with. And often the question is, what is three minutes going to do for me? Look at my life. I'm completely overwhelmed in this case. You've got to be kidding. I've gained 30 pounds. You want me to meditate for three minutes? What does that have to do with anything? So, and of course, I lead them along that path that this is about a lifestyle shift. This is about your life, not about your day. It could be about your week. It could be about your day. But in this case, this is about her shifting her unresourceful habits that she had developed and become very comfortable with back to the ones that were going to meet and accomplish what she wanted to, bring her to the life that she desired. So we started with a three-minute meditation, and that is just focusing your mind, first quieting it through breathing, and then focusing a guided meditation about what you want to bring into your life. And the first day... Uh, I put her into the three-minute meditation as a tool. What we brought into her life was a 15-minute break every day to just walk. That was it, just walk. And when we came out of the three minutes, she said, I can't do 15 minutes. So we shifted that to three minutes. So you can see how finding the solution that works for the individual is very important. So I'll fast forward from that. She dropped the weight. She did get back to her healthy lifestyle. She continued to to work, but she did it in a way where it was bringing pleasure to her, and she started to travel and do the other things that she could enjoy much more. In addition to being a mother, she found and reacquainted herself with the individual that she was in addition to all of that. So we started with a three-minute meditation. We did some real practical things about coding her calendar and descheduling her. Uh, She worked the uh, five-step process frequently on many different things. We took a look at her beliefs. She worked that exercise and uh, adopted a different way of thinking. She became much more focused on the positive thought process of bringing into her life rather than spending the time imagining what she didn't want. We We do that a lot. We all do that. Imagination can be both ways. We spend a lot of time worrying about the what if and I can't believe that happened and we spend a lot of time ruminating about that. What I help people do is switch that around and use imagination as a power and a tool rather than a way to keep us stuck. Yeah, and so much creativity comes from that. If we just allow us to sort of play with our imagination and um, look at different possibilities, uh, open the box up, so to speak. Right, yeah, and you know, creative, creative, uh, creativity is very important. I live in the middle of the Silicon Valley. A lot of creative types around here. However, when you start to, when I work with tech people, they often don't see themselves as creative because it's such a, you know, a kind of a black and white type of thing. If this fits this algorithm and this makes sense, then that's where we're headed to success. But creativity is so essential for well-being because it allows the mind and the body to connect in a very po- it can in a very positive way. We can also be create, very creative in a negative way as well. But using that creativity, we have to nurture it, and that means we've got to give it time and space. And just as food is to the body, time, space, and quiet is to our mind and brain. So it's important that we that we have those practices, those daily practices, not just about eating the healthy organic food or exercising our body. We need to also provide space and time for our mind to replenish and rest. Yeah, so true. Okay, well, yeah, we're going to go to another break and and talk more with uh, Yvonne Tolley about um, um, various things that you can do. We'll get our last practical tips from her for creating a balanced lifestyle. Stay tuned. 
Certified professional coach Pamela Reeves can help you with your relationships. Motivational and image coaching are just some of the ways she can help you enhance all aspects of your life. Her book, Is It Love or Merely a Sick Attachment, helps readers clearly distinguish healthy, loving relationships from toxic ones. Ms. Reeves has put her words into action through Ray of Hope Kenya, an international initiative that provides outreach to victims of abusive relationships there with the goal of helping them rebuild their lives and the tools to avoid abuse. Ms. Reeves operates various business interests through her umbrella network, Nella LLC, and credits her success to her diverse work experience. Whatever your goals, whether striking a balance, reinventing your image, or simply lifting your lifestyle, Pamela Reeves will help you achieve them. Your life, your call. Dial 410-902-5715 or email Pamela at pamreg01 at verizon.net. She's also on the web at pamreeves.com and on Twitter at Pamela underscore Reeves. Do you battle with weight loss? There is a solution. Founder of Weight No More Consulting, Deborah Simons, can help you lose weight safely and effectively through weight loss surgery. I know. I had the surgery two years ago, and I am 135 pounds lighter and medication-free. This full-service weight loss center caters to your every need as you navigate to a healthy weight following surgery. Servicing all of Canada, Weight No More Consulting takes pride in its compassionate care and guides you through each step before and after surgery. Starting with informational meetings, Weight No More Consulting educates each potential client before they decide to have surgery on the health risks of obesity and the various weight loss surgeries available. After surgery, Weight No More Consulting provides a solid support system with ongoing meetings to ensure continued success. Deborah Simons and Weight No More Consulting are committed to promoting your health and wellness through maintaining a healthy weight for life. This is Christine, it's your host at Voices of Women on Bold Brave Media and Tune In Radio. And today we have Yvonne Talley here today, and we're t- talking about her new book, Breaking Up with Busy. So Yvonne, please give your website where people can find out about you, um, any workshops you have, what you have to share on your website. Yes, it's YvonneTalley.com, and that's Y-V-O-N-N-E, Talley, T-A-L-L-Y.com. And I do have a workshop on there called Vibrant Living. It starts in June, and uh, when someone buys my book from the site, uh, then they can go ahead and automatically enroll at no charge into the Vibrant Living uh, workshop, which I help people learn how to deploy their passion in life and really find that life that they want to uh, express and live within. Oh, that's great. So um, everybody check that out, EvonneTolley.com. So let's um, get to just a little practical information, a, a, a tip you can provide to help women who might be experiencing burnout right now. Yeah, well, I, and I think if we start from a practical standpoint, I always like to start with coding your calendar. It's so easy to get into the must and the wants of the day. You know, the wants represent those long-range goals of our lifestyle, and the must, they don't need any explanation. We actually spend an average of 14 hours a day in this category. There are things like chores and family care and work and life management. The piece that we've forgotten is the just because. And that one, that important element is to, you know, to remember that. Um, that's where pleasure expands without judgment or justification. It could be as simple as taking a walk just because but or, or grabbing a cup of coffee with a friend just because. It's important that we put that on our calendar and schedule it as a time for ourselves as a source of replenishment. Remember earlier on when we were talking, that self-care, that's the piece that we're missing. And the book is full of, you know, 20-some-odd uh, suggestions and tips and uh, practice, practice, practices that are easy to implement and quick to implement that can help moving you in that direction of self-replenishment, more joy, and more, um, uh, more pleasure in life, more fun. Yes, we all want that more fun, a balance of that fun and work and pleasure. And so if you were in an elevator with someone and you had a 30 seconds, you know, that elevator pitch, what's the number one thing you would tell them to start doing now? Well, slow down. I might hit the red button and stop the elevator just so I could have them, cap, you know, captive audience. 
And I think what's really important is to keep the big picture front and center. It's very easy easy to get stuck in the minutia of the day. And if we keep our big picture front and center, we'll be more we'll be more likely to move from being stuck in all of that stuff, that busy stuff, if you will, and move into something that might be more productive. So, And then take three minutes a day to meditate. I think that's important. Start your day with a mantra. It will help you stay focused on what you want, not what you're trying to avoid. And uh, keep in mind what will be important. What's important? Will it be important today, tomorrow, a week, a month, a year from now? And that's a great way to gauge your involvement in a problem or a distraction and help you stay focused on really creating what you need and want and desire. Oh, that's um, great uh, information for everybody. So thank you so much, Yvonne, for being on the show today. My pleasure. Thank you. So so, um, everybody, be sure to check out her book, Breaking Up with Busy, so you can learn more about Yvonne at www.yvontolly.com. T-A-L-L-Y dot com. And buying the book, you can get a free workshop. That's fabulous. So we're at the end of our show today. Um, you can find out more about me on my website, chrysalisleadership.com and womanofwisdom.org. And we have um, circles that are happening in Seattle. I'm starting a book club at the end of this month. If you're interested in, um, we might study some books on the on the uh, Divine Feminine or feminine spirituality or or books that whatever um, the group wants to decide to do and so you can you can email me at wow w-o-w at womenofwisdom.org to find out more about that if you'd like to be part of a book club i've been wanting to do this for years and i'm excited about that and um also check out my book uh, woman of wisdom empowering the dreams and spirit of women it's a book of art, poetry, and talks from some amazing presenters we've had at Women of Wisdom. Jean Houston, Jean Shinoda Bolin, Mary Winman, Nikki Scully. Um, it's just a lot and such wise words of, of uh, about the divine feminine, the diversity of it of, in art and poetry as well. So check that out, and you can get that on either of those websites. Um, it, it supports Women of Wisdom, and we're a nonprofit organization. So this is Chris Danish, your host at Voices of Women on Bold Brave Media and Tune In Radio. I'll be back on um, it's what's next Wednesday. Next Wednesday, I'm forgetting the date. May, May 30th, and I'll be interviewing Mary Demacher, and it's about Parents' Guide to Climate Revolution. So it's about how parents can help their children with that with the issue of climate revolution. So I hope you join me next week and everybody have a great week. You've been listening to Voices of Women with your host, Chris Stainis. Come join the conversation where women can work together to bring honor and respect to the feminine voice, which is within all people, men and women, on Voices of Women with Chris Stainis. You've been listening to the BBM Global Network. The ideas, views, and opinions of this broadcast are those of the participants of the program and are not necessarily the ideas, views, and opinions of the BBM Global Network Company.